There are plenty of bullshit explanations for it, but the primary reason religion persists is because people would rather not think about dying. Religion doesn't really solve the problem, but it has proven to be a great way to delay the problem. I've gone on record before saying it's only the slimmest minority of religious people that believe in an afterlife. Anybody who has ever exhibited self-preservation or mourned a loved one is full of shit if they tell you they honestly believe in heaven everlasting. Either that or they think all their loved ones are evil and hellbound. My favorite analogy is a soldier that takes a fatal wound and he's lying there on the battlefield. Religion comes up to him, hands him two band-aids and says, here, put these over your eyes. You won't see the wound. It'll go numb eventually, and sure, it'll still hurt if you move it, and you'll still die from it, but trust me, it's better this way. And from what I've seen, when people cut their ties with religion, the rope marked afterlife is the last one to go, and it's the hardest one to cut. I know plenty of atheists that still try to cling to any suspect pseudoscience that claims to provide evidence for a soul, and I also know plenty of lenient atheists that are willing to excuse religion from any wrongdoing based solely on this dubious assumption. Religion helps people deal with loss. Sure, you and I can handle confronting our mortality and the mortality of the people around us, but those dumbasses, they need a fairy tale to cling to. They need their security blanket, and who are you to deny them their spirit snuggie? Now, setting aside for a second that obviously their fairy tale doesn't work, there are still some serious problems that arise when you try to spackle over the inevitable. One way or the other, the wound is still bleeding, and eventually you're going to have to come to grips with it. Eventually you're going to have to rip those band-aids off. And who's better suited to this task, the person who spent their lives boldly facing their fragility, or the person who spent the last few decades pretending that they thought they got to go to super happy world dimension after they died? I was listening to the Atheist Experience the other day, and for those 11 people that somehow heard of our show without hearing about theirs first, it's a live public access call-in show out of Austin that's been going on forever. They take calls from atheists and believers alike, and even though 80% of their callers annoy the shit out of me, I still really enjoy the show and listen to it every Monday. You should, too, if you like that sort of thing. Anyway, so a woman calls in, and she's clearly wavering in her faith. She's, she's made the mistake of critically examining her religious beliefs, and they're fast crumbling, but she's holding out. She's having trouble letting go, and it's because she doesn't want to take the band-aids off. And it's not a self-serving thing, or at least not a directly self-serving thing. She seemed almost embarrassed to admit that it wasn't her own death she was fearing, it was her cats. She was a cat person. She'd lost a lot of cats over her life, and she wanted above all things to know that someday she'd be reunited with them. Look, I'm a cat person, and as silly as this might seem to some, I understand it 100%. I was lucky enough to be raised without a strong religious conviction, so I came to grips with the I'm going to outlive my pets thing a long time ago, but I can imagine how hard it would be to abandon such a pleasant fiction if you'd been using it to delay confronting those emotions. So when I heard this because I'm me, I got pissed. That's pretty much always my reaction when it comes to religion, you may have noticed. See, here's the cruel if unintentional consequence of believing in heaven. It's not there. And unless you've got some kind of serious mental dysfunction, you eventually realize that it's not there. You eventually realize that you've been lied to the whole time and somehow you feel robbed of something you never had to begin with. What's worse is that a lot of people only discover the net was an illusion when they try to jump into it. It's only when they have to face their own mortality or someone else's that they realize the whole thing was a house of cards. They were counting on God to make sense of it all. They were counting on heaven to make that loss easier to bear. They were counting on religion to finally pay them back for all of those tithes. But there was never anything there. And in the end, they eventually have to deal with their loss the same way we secularists deal with it, the hard way. But we secularists get a bonus. A realistic outlook on life and death leaves the finality in the forefront of your mind rather than trying to bury it in some basement somewhere. Every time I think about the people I love, I temper it with their transience, and it reminds me to forgive, to indulge, to embrace, and to remind me to pet my cats whenever the hell they tell me to, because someday I won't be able to anymore. They said that religion would make it easier, but it doesn't. It's in times like those that religion is at its weakest. And mourning a loved one is hard enough already if you don't have to mourn your God alongside them.